Okay, so I think I got my <laughs> lag issues fixed, I think. Is it is it fast right now? I'm not sure. I think it's faster. I'm not lagging anymore, at least. Okay, so anyway, I got a team that is remarkably free-to-play. And I say free-to-play even though I'm talking about Leora because some of you guys out there do not have, let's say, Gaius or Leora, for example, right? So you're, you're making a decision between Leora and Gaius for Kronos, for example, or maybe like in general content. But for this video, I just want to focus more on Leora because... Okay, so anyway, I found a team that is remarkably powerful. It is super freaking safe. So I have 10 wins here. And the reason why it's so safe, it's because of Leora. Now, if you had a Gaius instead, right? If you went for a Gaius, this team is probably not going to happen for you. And we are talking about K16 here, where the boss is like taking a lot of turns and all that. So K16 is super dangerous, right? Yet it is still functioning really well. But yeah, like I said, Gaius will not work in this case because Leora is the Esper that is making this super safe. So not only does she have invincibility for herself, she also has the standoff buff for the entire team, which lengthens up to two turns. And that is crazy. And do take note that my Leora has no skill ups at all. Now, before we take a look at the team, right, I need to go through how fast this team potentially is. And this team is not fast, okay? Please note that this team is safe, but it's not fast. As such, it's going to eat into your memo chips quite a little bit. So I'm taking 15 here, I'm taking 8 here, which is great, <laughs> which is great. I'm taking 15 as well. So all in all, I have 4 runs that are eating 8 memo chips. So 6 of my runs are going to eat 15 memo chips for a total of 122 memo chips in 10 runs. So it's definitely going to eat into your stash. But if you don't really care and you don't mind running this on like multi-battles, for example, then yeah, this is going to be okay for you. This is going to be perfect. So let's take a look at the team that I'm using over here. So I'm using Liora, I'm using Ira, I'm using the Black Twin, uh, Xiao Yin, and Heng Rie as well. Now, all these experts are completely... Okay, maybe not Heng Rie. Heng Rie, you kind of need to summon for her. Same for Ira as well. I totally forgot about that. But in most cases, these are epic experts. It's quite easy to obtain them. You don't need them to be R6, for example. They can just be at base form and it's still going to work. Now, like I said, Xiao Yin is completely free because playing this game for like maybe, I don't know, 10 days, that's going to give you like one copy of Xiao Yin, right? Okay, so let's take a look at all their stats first. These are the stats of Leora, and I know this is definitely upscaled as compared to new players, but then again, we are dealing with Chronos 16. We are not dealing with Chronos, I don't know, 10 or 11, right? These are the stats of Ira. Uh, these are the stats of Black Twin and Xiao Yin. And finally, Heng Rie as well with just the Panacea set. I just want her to heal a lot more. Ocean set is also going to work very well for her. Now, the reason why I'm using Ira here is there are two reasons. Number one, we want to reduce the AP of the followers so that the, the, they don't push the AP of the boss as much as they need to. And of course, on top of that, her second skill is also going to reduce the cooldown primarily on the leader, or it can also be used to remove a stun that is like, let's say, on my healer, for example. If it's on Hengri, we want to get rid of the stun as soon as possible, and then she can heal. So Ira with Hengri is actually really good. So if Hengri is stunned, Ira will remove that stun and then reduce the cooldown of Hengri so that Hengri can heal again. But most importantly, the reason why Ira is not the lead is not because of the higher attack lead over here. It's actually because Ira would focus her second skill on Leora, which would then reduce Leora's cooldowns as well. So that's why I don't need any skill ups on Leora, even though her cooldowns are like at 5 turns and I think 4 turns here, right? Yeah, it's still going to be okay. She's still going to cycle really well because of Ira. And obviously Black Twin is here for the defense break and just some AoE damage clearing the first two waves. Xiaowin is just here for AP control, a lot of good stuff. Anyway, let's take a look at how this team works. So we're going to do one battle here and I'll explain along the way as we progress. So the first couple of waves, they are not like, they don't follow any like one shot, one shot synergy or anything like that. It's not, right? We are wasting our skills. We are doing a lot of things that don't really make sense. And this is actually true for most Ira comps because Ira, especially when she's at R6, she gives random, do you see that, right? She she gives random uh, Brising Gamers Watch buff. As you can see, it's on a black twin here. So that's actually going to make your runs like super unstable, it's super crazy and wonky. But for the, for the most part, it's still quite safe because all that's really needed is for the boss to like go down as, like, as fast as possible or you just throw all your skills. So Ira is still going to work really well here. Okay, so now we have the invincibility on us. So we're not going to get hit. We're not going to get damage or anything like that, which is great. Uh, Leora is going to be like the main DPS, the main winning factor for this team here. Yeah, as you can see that we are pushing a lot of cooldowns onto Leora. So you're going to see her use her third and her second skills more effectively. As you can see, the Brising Gamers Watch went straight onto Leora again. So she's going to cycle her skills very, very well. Right, and like I talked about, Heng Rie is here for the healing, for the cleansing, just removal of all the debuffs. Really, really good stuff. And we are doing a pretty good job here. See, Leora has already used her third skill twice. And she's going to go straight into her second skill afterwards. And that's like gonna give us the standoff buff, like, like so. And it's super freaking safe. Like this team is just, okay, it's not that this team is safe. 
is that Liora makes your team super safe. So like I predicted, she's going to be really good for new players. This is going to be an excellent way for you to climb, like to climb to maybe K13. I think K13 is probably where most new players will be grinding for a little bit of time. And yeah, Liora is going to make it super easy. See, I, I, I didn't even flinch at all during this entire run. Like there was no way that the Kronos could take advantage of his extreme AP game because we have Ira here reducing the AP of both the followers. And especially the follow on the right as well. That one is a little bit painful. Okay, but as you can see here, the run is super slow. It took us 1 minute 46 seconds and 52 turns. Of course, this can go a little bit faster if RNG was better for us, but it's probably going to shave off at most like, I don't know, 30 seconds. But on average, it's not going to be super fast. It's going to maybe average to like about 140 or something like that. Okay, so this is like the pay to win lineup. And I mean, it's kind of like the same as before, but there are some things that I noticed as well. Now I'm using Gaius and Leora both together. And the reason for that is because they are going to help me clean up the waves, the earlier two waves very easily. So I know a lot of people are saying that Leora has bad AI, right? Mostly because of the second wave where Leora will not prioritize the mid boss. <laughs> she can just hit whoever she wants. And if she hits any of the other ads that is not the mid boss, the problem is you will not have a consistent team. So what consistency means is you're not going to have the same run all the time because of how that depends on whether you hit the mid boss or you hit the ads, for example. But as for your win rate, that is going to improve by a lot. Now there is one glaring issue that I faced with this team. And the issue is using Liora with Oli is kind of counterintuitive in a sense because if Liora has her second skill up, your ally is actually not going to die. And as such, Oli is not going to nuke instantly. Like let's say if your ally does not die, right? So Oli is not going to trigger his passive. He's not going to land the extra nuke. And that is a big problem. But aside from that, this team is incredibly safe. Let's take a look at our relics before we take a look at the team. So I've showcased Liora over here and uh, Black Twin as well. I've also showcased Xiao In at the start of the video. And here are the stats of Gaius if you need something to compare with and Oli who is just a crit damage whore. And of course one thing that you might have noticed is my Xiao In and Oli they have incredibly low crit rates. And even though they have super low crit rate they are still able to land crits with a 100% proc chance. Number one because of the type advantage which gives them an additional 15% crit rate. And secondly we have Gaius at R2 which also gives us more crit rate when he's in his god king state. And as you can see like it's over here right? Plus 20% crit rate to your allies. And of course, we also have the Black Twin here. Now, the thing is, I lowered the speed of my Black Twin so that Gaius is going to move second. And the order of these Espers are quite important because Kronos tends to attack your allies who are towards the right side. It's not guaranteed, but I've seen it being like more of a trend. So as such, Oli has to be on the right and he needs to have the, the, the light set so that he has immunity at the start so that he does not get stunned. Alright, so let's take a look at how this run works. And I'll try to explain along the way. The first two waves are super straightforward. We just nuke and we re with guys and that's it. So three turns over here. And as you can see, right, we do not have any attack buffers. So is that going to be a problem? I don't think so. It's It's been okay. My, my speeds are fine. I'm definitely going to have like eight memo chip runs all the time. But what I'm more concerned about is just uh, how regular you win, because as long as you lose, you're going to lose 20 memo chips like that, which really sucks. Yeah, see that? <laughs> Kronos went straight for the Ollie because of his positioning. So we're going to land a defense break here, very nice, and we nuke, full crits, and full crits. And yeah, okay, so this is the part where it gets a little bit sketchy because now we have a standoff, right? Which means we will not die. <laughs> well, at least if Kronos uh, uh, tries to kill someone, we will not die, and therefore Oli will not counter nuke. But in this case, we are going to counter nuke, like so. We don't kill because we didn't have a defense break, which is... Very sad. And yeah, as such, this definitely affected our runtime. Oh my goodness. There's so many turns being taken over here. <laughs> Mad rip. Okay, but yeah, we are done. So in most cases, right, we try to kill the boss while he still has the defense break. Or rather, we, we need to have our allies die before the boss loses his defense break so that Oli can counter with his passive. So that's like the main thing over here. That's something that I still have to address. But in terms of like win rate and survivability, it is, it is doing okay. So we're actually going to go ahead and just do a multi-battle, like a full 10 run. Like I've saved just enough of my memo chips for that. Okay, and now we have enough stamina as well. Let's just blitz this and let's just see how we perform. Okay, 8 memo chips. 8 memo chips. I, I mean, all I really care about at this point is 8 memo chips is really quite simple. But it's just the win rate that I care more about. And granted that this addition of Leora is going to make our runs like super safe. I'm just gonna take it. Like, yeah, I see, super freaking safe. 10 wins, 80 memo chips done. Just like that. But of course the average battle turns is quite high. Like this is an insane amount of turns and this is definitely not gonna be competitive at all. 
Like if you care a lot more about the leaderboard and you care more about the ultimate spire for example, right? Then yeah, this team is not going to be good for you at all. Like okay, okay, this is not updated just yet, but uh, with 20 something turns, we will not even be on the leaderboard. I don't think so. Actually, maybe we will. <laughs> we might. <laughs> we might be on the leaderboard, but anyway, this is like still quite early and we would not really know just yet. But yeah, so that's this team and it is working out pretty well in terms of my win rate, which is something that is very important to me at this point. I don't really care too much about the leaderboard. I don't really care too much about the frame, to be honest. So all I care about is having a good win rate with as little memo chips spent as much as possible. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section about this lineup. How else do you think I can improve? I know there are other teams out there that is like achieving like really crazy stuff, like nine turns or something like that using Leora. And yeah, they are using other very premium espers as well. And I'll try to get my hands on those teams so that I can showcase it to you in case, you know, it's lost in like bad YouTube algorithm or something like that. But I do know that there are some content creators who are intending to showcase Leora to have like super, super freaking fast runs. Like Tiger has a team that is apparently doing 10.9 turns on average, but that requires an R4 Leora and yeah, that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free to Play. And as always, I will see you in the next video.